In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create this neon invisible clothes effect using line art. So the first thing you need to be aware of is just what assets you need. So you need some sort of background image and then some sort of person image with clothes on that kind of has the same vanishing point as the background image that you're going to use. And then all we're going to do is isolate this person out of this and bring it over here. For this tutorial, however, I'm going to assume that you already know how to cut things out in Photoshop. If you don't, look up videos on how to select and mask, and I'll have one linked in the description below. Okay, so now we're ready to start drawing our lines. I'm actually going to, if we zoom in here, I'm going to create one layer for the jacket to be one color. I'm going to make his shirt here, here, and here a second color, and then his hat and the wristband here a third color. So all you have to do is make sure you're selected on your top layer and then click this box with the plus. That will add a blank layer and then you're gonna go to your brush, make sure it's white and just I would say I'm gonna pick somewhere around like six and that's gonna be for my outline and like my most solid lines. Okay so I'm just gonna go around the outside now, boom trace around the jacket it doesn't have to be perfect because we're going to be erasing the jacket anyway but then i'm going to go and take this exact same size and trace out some of the more kind of prominent parts so this is where the jacket kind of goes to there there's this kind of major kind of crease down there maybe i'm going to go along all of these uh like stitch lines here and so yeah you're just going over your major lines with this first size. Once you think you have all your major lines traced with your first size, I would drop it by about two thirds. So I'm just gonna go to four, and I'm gonna use that one to just fill in some of these creases. Now, where there's like a bunch here, I'm gonna put a bunch in there. So I'm gonna put a whole bunch of these, I'm gonna trace this line, I'm gonna try and trace as many of these kind of creases in this bunch as possible. I think that looks good when it's like this. But in the main area here, I wouldn't go crazy. So on this one, I would do some of these like major kind of creases here, you know, but you don't want to go like super crazy in here and have too many. I think it looks kind of weird when you do that. And then obviously if you make some sort of mistake and go beyond where you want to go, then just go over to your eraser tool and erase what you don't need. So if you're just going to keep yours in white, then you can just stay on this same layer and just continue to draw the sleeves of the shirt, the hat, the wristband, whatever else you're going to include in your tracing, and then skip ahead to the time I have indicated below. But if you want the neon effect in different colors, then all we have to do is go down to this box and add a new layer and repeat the same process for each different color you want. So in my case, I added a layer for the shirt to be a second color, and then one for the hat and wristband to be a third color. And for the hat and wristband, I also used kind of a scribble on technique instead of just filling in the creases as well. Once you're satisfied with how all your lines look, then we're gonna make each of these layers glow. So I'm gonna show you at one time, and then you can apply it to all your layers. So all you do is click on your layer, double click to the right over here. It'll bring up the layer style window, and then just go down here to outer glow. So when you click on the word outer glow, not the check mark, click on the word, this outer glow menu will pop up. And then we're just gonna mess around. So I'm gonna make this one, I think I'm gonna have this as blue, I think, maybe a little bit lighter, and click OK. And then you're just gonna mess around with this. I like to have the spread here to be pretty low, and the size, just for now, have it you know, somewhere around 15, you know, something like this. Make sure this is softer and blend mode can be screen or linear dodge add also looks good in some cases. I like screen for this. And opacity, crank it up to the highest it can go for now and click OK. Then just repeat the same process with different colors for each of your other layers. What we do for the next step depends on whether you need a shadow or not. So if you don't need a shadow, then skip ahead to the time I have indicated below. If you do need a shadow, then what we're gonna do is click on our subject layer right here, and then we are going to double click to the right of it to open up that layer style window again. And instead of outer glow this time, we're gonna click on drop shadow. 
Now in there, just make sure your opacity is fairly high. Just slide the distance over so you can see that it's there and don't really worry about any of these other things. Just keep them fairly low like this and click OK. Then we're gonna slide down here. We're gonna right click on where it says drop shadow and create layer and then click OK. Now what that's gonna do is that's gonna separate the shadow onto its own layer. The reason why we wanna do that is so that now we can go Control T and just make sure that this chain up here is unclicked like that so that we can squash the shadow down like this and then just slide it over to kind of line it up where you want it. In this case, mine's gonna be fairly squashed like that and I'm happy with that and just click check. Then we're gonna go up to filter, blur, Gaussian blur and blur it enough so that you like the way that it looks. So I'm gonna go maybe kind of like that and click OK. And then I'm just gonna drop the opacity a little bit because I don't need it to be that strong. So just something like that. Now, that might be enough to create a good looking drop shadow, but I actually had to go in on mine and I used the brush tool to create a darker spot at his toe where it touches the ground. And then I also created a duplicate of the original shadow and just stretched it out because there's lights coming from a whole bunch of different directions in my image. So do what you need to do to make your drop shadow look nice. The next thing we have to do is get rid of the original clothing here so we can see through to the background. To do that, all you have to do is click on the mask of your original subject image, not on the thumbnail here, but right on the mask, and then go to a brush, make sure it's black in the foreground right here, and then just turn up your brush size to be fairly high and the hardness to be fairly high. And then all you're doing is painting over the clothing parts that you want to get rid of. Just be, just don't paint all at once, paint like little sections at a time. So, and then be careful along where your edges are that you have the, still the clothing from the original one left. Just paint out everything that you want to be see-through. The last step that we need to do is match our subject with the background in terms of brightness, contrast, and color. So my guy right here, he's a little bit more washed out, like there's not a lot of contrast, and he's a little bit more yellow compared to this purple lighting background. So to adjust him, I'm gonna click on that subject layer, and then I'm gonna go down to my adjustment layers here, and I'm gonna pick color balance, because I have a color problem. So in there, you can see that I can slide this along, but see when I slide this, it affects everything. So that's not really gonna help me. So what I need to do is click on this right here. And what that does is that creates a clipping mask. So this arrow means that it's only gonna now affect what's directly below it. So now when I slide this along, you can see that it only affects the subject. So what I'm gonna try and do is I'm gonna try and match a little bit to what this looks like over here. Cause I think I can kind of create a similar look to make it kind of blend a little bit. So I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna maybe add a touch of red and a little bit of blue, maybe a little bit more here. I think that looks pretty good to start in terms of the color. Then I'm gonna add another one here. So if you have a brightness, darkness, or contrast problem, you can try levels or curves. I'm gonna go levels for ease of use just right now. And this one on this side will make it more contrasty, and this one will make it kind of washed out. So again, I need to make sure that I'm clicked on this, a clipping mask. So now I have both of these clipped to this image only. And I'm gonna just add a little bit of contrast to my guy right here. And then I'm just gonna use this slider down here to kind of knock down my highlights a little bit. So I think that looks pretty good right there. So that's pretty much it. But as a bonus, I'm gonna show you like mine here, I don't like, I wanna have this more blurry in the background. So that'll make this pop a little bit more. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go to my background layer and I'm gonna put a mask on it. So this box with a little circle in it. And then in that mask, I'm gonna to go to my gradient tool and I'm gonna select, for me, I'm gonna select this one right here. If you just have like a field or something, then you can probably just pick this regular gradient. I have to pick this one because I need this to be in focus, this, this, and this, but just this back part to be out of focus. So to do that, I'm gonna click on this gradient and it's fine, black to white is okay here. 
and I'm going to click in the middle of the background here and I'm going to kind of drag out to here. I'm trying to just make a box that's kind of parallel here. So that's a little bit off. I'm going to try maybe there. So that looks pretty good. It doesn't have to be perfect. So then this over here, whatever is kind of faded out here the most, that's what's going to be the most out of focus. And it's going to kind of blend back to being this kind of plane here is all going to be in focus. So now all I have to do is click back on my background thumbnail here and go up to filter, blur, and I'm going to go to lens blur. And then in lens blur, you can see it kind of generates this. You can see that that's now like most blurry and then it kind of gets less and less and less blurry as we get to here. So you can increase that if you want by going on radius here. You can slide this up to make it even more blurry if you want. I think that looks bad. So I'm going to go back around that 40, 45 mark. I thought that looked pretty good. And make sure your source is on layer mask. If yours is backwards, so let's say yours was like this, where it was like, whoa, wait a minute, this part's in focus and this is blurry, then either slide this or click invert and it'll, it'll fix that problem. And then just click OK. Now, at this point, it still looks like nothing happened because we have to go back over to the mask part, right click on it and go disable layer mask. And now the background is blurry the way that we want it. So that's how you create a neon invisible clothes effect with line art. If you got something out of this video or you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing and I will catch you next time.